guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Top 5 video. Today I'm brought to you with Callie and Grant, and we're going to be doing our Top 5 Games of the Year 2019. Yeah. Our Top 5 list from 5, 4, 3, 2, and then 1. And of course we'll do some honorable mentions, maybe we'll talk about our 6 through 10 really quick. But uh, yeah, so we should have 15 games for you total to uh, be able Check to purchase or, or, <laughs> or pick up. Uh, some of the rules for our list here are, if we couldn't figure out what year it was, I don't know. I, I, there's a couple of them that were like last year, but we only played this year. Uh, I have put those on honorable mentions. Kickstarter and games are hard too because they might we might have reviewed them a year before they actually go out to the back. Or maybe they came out this year. Yeah. So our rule is year. if we did something last year, we won't do it this year, even if it came out this year and it was on our last year's list. And the same would go it would be applied for this. Uh, and there are games definitely on my list that are Kickstarter this year, but won't come out until next year. But they're here, so they won't be next year's. Uh, those are pretty much the only rules I made. And then I just talked about a couple honorable mentions that were I guess mm -hmm. from last year. Or years prior, if I had somehow missed them, and we didn't play them until this year. <laughs> so mine are mostly from videos that we've done this year. So, so if it's a video we've done this year, you probably might see the list, uh, or has a chance to see the list. That's mostly what mine is. So, okay. And so <laughs> we usually what we do is we roll dice, but we're in a new little area for today. Uh, normally we roll the die, and the person who gets the highest chooses the order. But I didn't bring I the have dice. A dice. You do? Yeah, in one of the games. Right oh, here. with the save. <laughs> All right, okay. I guess we can do that. It's very small. <laughs> this will work. This will work. Six. <laughs> Perfect. Two. Two. Five. Okay, so I will choose the order then. And the order will be, I'll go first, and then Grant and then Callie can go. This is number five on our top five list of 2019. So, uh, my number five is a game called Growl. Growl came out this year. Uh, it was on Kickstarter, I believe, last year. And it's by Joey Vigor. Uh, he's made other games, um, one of them being Chaosmos. And this one here is a semi-deduction game, trader-style game. And it has a ton of really cool components to it. You're basically going to be either a human or a wolf, and your objective is to pass cards to players from your hand to infect them or to kill them. You'll each be getting a little player board as well. Let's see if I can pull this out really quick here. Uh, there's so much stuff in here. Uh, and it will basically symbolize what your character is, whether it's alive or dead. You'll also be going throughout the game until eventually the last night hits. Players will do some interesting things during the last night cards. Mm -hmm. And whoever's left alive at the very end of the game is going to do this thing called the growl, where people will slam, slam their hands against the table Grr. if they are <laughs> evil. And anybody who's left alive wins. And if nobody's left alive, then the werewolves will win. And then you'll score points. You'll actually get coins, and it comes with some metal coins and whatnot. The Howley Growly box is really cool. Yeah. And all the coins are very, very high quality. They're very nice. I really like this game because it's a game that you probably will enjoy even if you don't like trader games because there's, there is social interaction and stuff like that, but the game itself, it, it can be played uh, without the need for, for the whole social deduction thing. So if you're not a fan of the game Werewolf or whatever, this Which game- Which I actually am not, and I, I agree. This. I like this one because you, you have mechanical things you can do to influence the game. Yes, it's almost all mechanically done. There's no, there's nothing inherently well, social. Compared, that, a, compared to a werewolf, yeah. where yeah. you, you gotta talk your way out of it. Yeah. This but, one's a more structured version of werewolf. And then, so if I'm the werewolf, obviously we're playing with six people. I'm, I'm the only werewolf. I'll have to infect them first, and then they will infect, and they will infect. And that's what I'm trying to do is gather everybody to infect him. Everyone thinks he's a good guy, but I'm still going to give him the wound. But yeah, this is an excellent little game, and if you like trader-based games, you'll like this. And if you don't like trader-based games, you still might like this, actually. It's a party and it's, game. it's important to note that we got all the extra stuff, so the Howly Growly box, which uh, is not part of the base game. But, but we played, you don't we, need we it. We played the original base game, and, yeah, and I would yeah. give it the same review. Uh, extra stuff is just nice. It's extra. Yeah, exactly. My number five. I guess my number five would be Five Minute Mystery. <laughs> because I like co-op games, and I like uh, short games that pack a punch. And this is a prototype. And this five minute game packs a punch for... Okay. All you do is you're gonna get these cards, and you're gonna try and find the clues to decipher the codex, which will give you hints on who the culprit was, 
and then you're just gonna try and guess who it is. Yeah, it's fairly In five quick. minutes. Fairly quick game. Some of them are a little longer. Uh, it can go a little longer depending on the well, case. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the the first scenario is is the a ten minute one, but the rest of them are all five. You know, in the first time you play it, sure, ten minutes is nice. If you don't like five minute dungeon, will you like five minute mystery? Maybe it has a lot of the same feel. So it, 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 it's it's also very different too, though. It's very yeah. different too. It's um, very it's different. This is more puzzly. Yeah, more puzzly and deduction. And, but still that same kind of level of intensity. Not Maybe not quite as oh, much intensity. It's, it's stressful. I mean, it's intense. Because you're looking to find all these little Yeah, I agree. Symbols. It's just a little, like, if Five Minute Dungeon is a five out of five in this intensity, this is like a four, four and a half out of five. Uh -huh. It's a little bit less. Yeah. There's more, you have to be more clever with this one. Yeah. Excellent game, though. Excellent game, mm -hmm. Five Minute Mystery. Mm -hmm. Wiggles 3D. You're up. All right, my number five, which uh, we do not have a physical copy with us right now. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but a good friend of ours owns is the Quacks it's pretty, of Quendelberg. It's right here. Oh. Is the Quacks of Quendelberg. Where is it? With the Herb Witches expansion. Where's so, the game? Where oh, is I mean, um, a covering grant or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving us more work to edit. <laughs> yes. And uh, I liked it because as soon as we played it, which we played it at Gen Con. Yep. Yes. I immediately wanted to play it again. <laughs> and that's how I know, for me especially, we play so many games. And um, just knowing that, just having that need to want to play it again immediately is pretty rare because we have a lot of games, new games that we need to play and other games I want to try. Because we have so many, there's no way to play them all. So this was, that was a good indicator to me that this was one of my top games. I love the puzzle aspect. I immediately wanted to do better than I had done the first game because like, oh, I get it. I want to create these combos and use these different cards and the witches to create even better combos and try to, try to beat him. <laughs> the game's basically a push your luck game. You're going to be pulling things out of yeah. the bag until you don't want to. If you bust, you lose everything. If you do really well, you'll score more points. You'll get new mm -hmm. tokens to put in your bag. And then the herb and which then is you're adds more your to that. And as you're pulling out of the bag, which is really neat thematic element. And to truth it. be told, we actually have not, we don't own the game, no. and nor have we um, well, done a review. We, we haven't, haven't done, done a review. review oh no, Josh did. Josh did oh, a review Josh of did the game. Okay. And, and technically, the game came out last year, but the expansion came out this year, so that's why we're okay. putting it on our list. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and start with number four now, and uh, I guess we'll need the die again. Six. I again. Six again. Three. Probably not six. <laughs> Good enough for me. And we'll go opposite order. Callie, then Grant, and then myself. All right. My number four, which is Tiny Towns by AEG. Tiny Towns is a puzzle game where you're trying to build your little town with uh, little colored cubes to match the certain plans that are in play. And then you'll get special bonuses or points for not only building that particular building in your town, but also where it is in relation to other towns on the grid. You'll get certain points or what other buildings you have in your tiny town. So it's a it's just a puzzle game that I really like, and I played it multiple times, even played it solo player, which is pretty rare, <laughs> I'd say, for me to play a lot of solo. Uh, just a quick look at some of, there's a ton of these town uh, building, me wooden meeple type things, and the cubes are really cute too. And then, of course, lots of ways to score points. Uh, the little board boards. where you actually build your town it's pretty fun and that's tiny towns and some additional ways oh, to yeah. play the game as well too yes there's a lot of replayability with the different buildings that you'll have available to build for your town when i first played tiny towns i didn't like it and i've played it over and over again since then even last night i played it and it's a really great game especially to teach mm -hmm. to kids and new gamers as well. Uh, I, I think I don't like the game because I don't like playing these type of games with her because she's mean and makes me lose all of the points. So as long as I'm not playing this game with her, I enjoy it <laughs> profusely. That's what I found out. It's fun. That's all I have to say. 
Like, yeah. You want to say anything about I, her playing with her? Uh, no, because I actually had the better combo when I played with her. Yeah. I got yeah. screwed. Screwed <laughs> miserably. And I was just like, this game sucks. I'm done. It, it required a lot of multi-step thinking, planning ahead, which is a really good good skill to develop. It just stretches Unless you, you don't have to feed your cottages. Mm -hmm. though. Yeah, yeah but also just... the problem is that yeah, when you're building things, other people are also taking resources, and then you are forced to take that resource, which I think was your kind of issue with the game. Uh, yeah, like I, and like I said, it's a great game. I, I totally agree that it, it, it will make somebody's top five list. It wouldn't make mine just because of the <laughs> fact that you don't have a lot of choice, especially within a larger player game. You have to kind of yeah. manipulate your board based on other people's choices, and I like feeling like I'm in control, mm -hmm. and this one doesn't give you that. But like I said, I've, I've played it, yeah. It, it's, it make my top five list of games I don't like, but play often. Yeah. <laughs> I want more I brick, think... how about you guys? What? I want more brick, no. how about you guys? No, no. no. <laughs> so that's kind but of the idea. But yeah, with the lower player count, two or three players, I think is where it really shines, because you have more autonomy of choosing which resources It just depends on how much choice you want to have yeah. in the game, because you can manipulate everybody else's. There's even specific, uh, cards that like special buildings that you can build for yourself that will no longer give you the choice but give you a lot of points. Yeah. So there's like those options for you. Uh, like I said, it's it's a really well constructed game. Mm -hmm. I think I think puzzle players are gonna love this game. Yep. That's yeah. my number four. Who's up next? Good choice. All right, I have this one. Love Battle High. Love Battle High School. <laughs> my Japanese anime game. Yes. Uh, this this fit the the tagline surprisingly good. Surprisingly good. I mean, you want, you want, when you saw, I would, I, I would not know what to expect with this. So in this game, you are just trying to for you. maneuver. Uh, you don't play a character per se. I believe you play a, a shipper. If you don't know what that is, it's someone who wants a character to get together in a, a fantasy, and uh, a in some sort of TV show. <laughs> so you're trying to increase the affection of the main character with the various different female protagonists and get, you know, one or two characters to uh, be in like a love triangle with the main character by the end of the game. Yeah, this was, I would agree, this would fit into the surprisingly good category. I like anime a lot. Grant mm -hmm. is a big anime fan as well, probably even more so than me. Uh, and just the idea of moving your characters around, going to certain areas that all represent these like, um, what do you want to call them? Harem style anime? Yep. It feels like you're in it. And it feels like you're actually trying to get Katsumi to fall in love with the main character. And also maybe this other girl. But not this girl. Because that girl is Callie's girl trying to fall in love with the characters. <laughs> and so yeah, it, it has this really interesting appeal to anime lovers. And it's it's made well as well. Yep. I mean, there is luck. There is still kind of like, like classic old roll a die and see what you get. Like when you, you can go to the gym to test your, your show off skill and you roll. Five. Uh, not bad. Plus one love to the girl in the room of your choice. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. But you can also brick. So there's that, that like old mechanic where you just <laughs> where you just face plant. And I thought it was gonna be a lot more like that. But there's only a couple rooms where actually that, that and is you involved. choose whether or not you want to go there. Yeah. You you basically decide if you want to have that luck involved, or perhaps you just go to history and change and take a history lesson with with your favorite girl. And all the components are really well made. Yeah. The board is beautiful. It's really nice. It feels like it feels like a harem anime. Yeah. So if that's your thing. You're going to like this. And I personally like this game. Yeah. Kelly, you want to play a harem anime game? Uh, I didn't play this game, so I can't comment. Are you gonna, are you, <laughs> uh, is it something you'd be interested in? Maybe the it seems like the theme seems a little weird to me. I think but... some people are gonna not be so uh, yeah, so yeah. Uh, interested in it. Hey, if you like anime, man, that's part of the whole whole thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I can see I can see some people's turn off for that and uh, the whole idea of making a love triangle with two yeah, girls and a guy. Going after a love triangle rather than like true love. I think that's like a, like a secondary condition. I think you're just trying to get your yeah. You, in, in you're trying one, to get your match, but you can settle for a triangle. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're if trying you're to get... going after your love match, then that makes. But if it happens good. to be a love triangle and you do, it does have your characters. It works as well. Yeah. And it's just because the, they're both in love with him. And then just the yeah. idea of all the girls are just trying to vie for the attention of the guy. That's yeah. just a a what a category of yeah. Of it, anime. it fits the anime it's trope, trope, you know. Yeah. Okay, I got to do one now. Um. Okay, so this originally was one different one, but I had to do a different one after that because apparently the other one has to be an honorable mention. So, 
Nevertheless, it doesn't take anything off of this game. I just had to do some finagling with my moving my list around. And this is called Sierra West by Jonathan Paquetton, Board and Dice. Sierra West is an interesting game because you can play. It's the idea of like settlers on the, of the on the prairie kind of thing, and you're going around. Uh, you've got your big board. You're trying to. There's so much going on with this game, but what I like about this one specifically is you're building a tableau but not in the basic sense. You're building a tableau pyramid based on your board, which also has indentations in the back, and based on how you place your cards or what you're going to be able to do. And you'll be going along these, these paths throughout the game trying to get resources. And the order you get to do it too. And the order you get to do it. You get to a lot of selection, a lot of choice, a lot of um, different types of variable yeah. gameplay modes. Yeah, each of these cards has five different things and based on how you orient them is the actions you get to take. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a wonderful little game and it has multiple expansions of the game. You can play a fishing per version of the game, you can play an apple orchard version of the game. There's a cops and robbers type theme or uh, I don't know what, what are they called outlaws and and renegades or whatever. They all have the same base core play, but the other things you do in the game is different. And there's tons of components in the game. <laughs> it's very, it's really, really well made, and it looks great. It feels great to build your tableau each and every time. You don't know who's winning because everybody's doing different things throughout the entire game. It's a little puzzling, so it's something you would like. It's got a little euro and a little extreme. You go, you know most of the information in the game, which is what I like, and I'm pretty sure you liked it too. Yeah, yeah I liked it. But yeah, Sierra West, it, it was just really cool, and I love the production value on the game. You could totally see the amount of love and effort put in to make this game look great. And the fact that you could play the different game modes is super cool as well. Uh, they actually do feel different. It's not like you're just adding more stuff. It's a completely different part to the main game that gets added to the game. And there's just so many components for it. We got all the little fish and all the, you know, like fishing in the game is so cute. Uh, this is an excellent little game. I really enjoyed it. So my number two, two or four, four, is Sierra West. Oh, there's a little fishing boat. Cute. You just like the fishing. No, I just, it, it's got a lot to it. It's just got a lot of quality to it. And it's really pretty. You can just, there's just so much. This feels like more than one game. Uh, it feels like the base game and like, expansions all added to one value. It gives you a good value for the yeah, game. Yeah, it comes with four different major major uh, expansions like scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sierra West, number three. 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 Five. Five. Six. No. Nice try. <laughs> one. Nice. Karma got me for. <laughs> All right, we'll just go down the line. All right, for fair enough. Number three. Okay. My number three is another puzzle game, but it's hey, also a dexterity. She took it off my list. It's also a dexterity element. <laughs> no, it is Jetpack Joyride by Lucky Duck Game. Like, they're really good. Lucky Duck Games uh, eh. always. Oh! <laughs> Vince, did you hear that? No. Uh, they're, it's just the quality is really good, and just the, clev the cleverness and innovation that they do, and the and the combination with technology is really great. But this game in particular, it's kind of like an app game. No, so, I mean the game is I an mean, app. Jetpack yeah. Joyride is an app. But it's a board game that it still feels like the app. When oh, right. our, just, our, my review like actually that. shows the app in, in motion along with how the game functions too. Yeah. So each player is going to have a set of four cards, which is their level for the game. And then there are all of these... Oh, which the camera can see. Oh, yeah. Something yeah, like this, ahead. probably. <laughs> there are all of these puzzle pieces. And in it's a timed game, so there's a dexterity element to it, as well as puzzle. Trying to manipulate... Well, you gotta start off the board, but... Trying to manipulate your puzzle pieces to avoid all the bad stuff, as well as Get all the good stuff. all the coins, get all the good stuff. And complete objectives, too. And there's different objectives that come out that vary with each game. These change every level, which changes how you play as well. So lots of replayability, lots of... It's a pretty quick, too. And you can have, what, four players, I think? You can play more if you have more than one copy of the game. Yeah, one to four players, 30 minutes, ages 8 plus. I, I just lo always love this sort of spatial awareness to the game there's yeah there's lots of levels lots of cards here uh Items missions you that you'll go on and benefits that you'll gain throughout the game as well which will help you build more points 
and uh, lots of these cool pieces. It's, it's Dexterity Blockus, is yeah. what it is. It's Dexterity Blockus put into the world of Jetpack Joyride. And we just always have a fun playing this game. A lot we of different lot. people like this game. It's easy to bring out for people who don't play a lot of games or maybe like app type games. Yeah. Uh, so it's really easy to bring out for those types of players. See, I, I actually like this game. I felt like I was good at it uh, until I played with Grant. And then Grant I is really good at it. I stopped liking it so much. <laughs> no, no, I, I really, I really enjoy this game. The one um, time I lost, I was sick. So it was. It's, it's a very fun game. It's a very good party game, and it's really easy to teach. Yes, Jetpack yes. Really good. Easy to get on the and table I know you for like a lot it. of people. This might even. I don't know, this might go on your list unless you're tricking me. I don't know. Leave it or on honorable mention. Just in me. case. I don't know. <laughs> And then it's me now, huh? Yes. Jetpack Joyride by Lucky Duck Games. Number three. Pretty good. Pretty, pre, pre, pretty good. What do I got? Secret. Oh, okay. I have, you have a game of mine that I'm going to have on my list. Oh, okay. It's City Skylines. Ooh. Right? We just played yes. this recently. It came in from Cosmos. This is basically SimCity uh, put into a board game. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a lot of games that try and do this. Some of them do well better than others. I'm not that we don't like those games. No, it's just this one does it better. Yeah. Uh, what's 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 the one I uh, Expansity. From Expansity. Yeah. yeah that that's one's a good that one's one. a pretty good one. Yeah. It's yeah. it's just really a little different. bit different, is all. That one's uh, you're growing. You're building. Yeah, it has up. like a three D element. Uh, it's too. got the three D element. This different. one. This one yeah. is more. This is tile laying. There's tons of different tiles. You've got the commercials. It's tons. It is definitely puzzly. You've got the big uh, city it's that's going to be scoring because you have these weird shapes too. Yeah, you're going to be scoring points to it. Uh, it. It's got you're trying to gather happiness, but you're avoiding all the pollution. There's crime and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, this entire there's lots board. of balancing elements to it and and combo scoring to try to maximize your points. You don't and know then... what the city is going to look like until after you flip these over and each of these each time you flip it over is a round and there's three or four rounds in the game. There's a ton of these different tiles that you can make and you play usually with three or four of them. This is just a really really good city building game. I've always been a fan of Sim City. I've always been a fan of city building style games and uh, she likes puzzle games. So we played this once, then we lost miserably, <laughs> so it is very challenging. We played it again. Mm -hmm. We did much better. And I, I, I've played this. We made this, it more challenging yep, on ourselves. Played this by myself. Really liked it. Uh, it is a gorgeous looking game at the end. You mm -hmm. feel like you've built a full city, and it's very diverse and very different, and very unique. And each time you play the game is going to be different. It comes with five mini expansions to the game as well. It's not like Sierra West oh, as yeah. far as packed full of expansions, but this one does give you. You can uh, kind of add on variable level up player with. powers and all that kind of stuff all put into one box. There is a lot of content in this game. I, I really like this one. I was surprised I liked it because usually puzzle games, she, we play so many of those with her that's just like, ah, eh, puzzle game. But this one is very different. It shines out among a lot of the rest. Uh, I'm a big fan of this. Obviously, number three on my list for the year. I didn't play that one, but I saw you guys play most of the game, and I thought the fact that you, you basically choose when the round ends is very interesting. Yep. It, it plays cooperatively, and you're literally... The more players you play, it does feel... It's it's interesting. It doesn't feel... Yeah. Most of the games that function like this... I'm gonna, Could I feel can, very solo. It feels like, why the heck are they even playing with me? Give me your cards, and I'll play by myself. But this one, it does a good job of it, of making you have to work with your partner. Oh, what do you got? Why do you want to play that? Oh, I want to do this. <laughs> And additionally, okay, well I can play this, then you can play that, and we kind of combo it. And a good rule for this game, too, is if you want to be even more challenging, no, you can't tell each other what you're going to be playing <laughs> or what are in your hands. One of the two things. Mm -hmm. And you can make yourself a little more challenging. Uh, yeah, so and when you add in the variable player powers, that makes it more of a multiplayer game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of little cool mini expansions in it, so, yeah. Good number three. Well, since Cali stole Jetpack Joyride, I had to replace it with something else. So I'll bring in a Promenade by Tate Wu. Oh, Promenade. Oh. Uh, I was actually sad that I didn't get to back this because the second Kickstarter was only out for a week and I forgot. So the first one didn't go through, but then the second one did. And he made it so that everybody would be able to get a copy yep. regardless of what it funded for, which was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it only lasted a week and I forgot to back it because it only lasted a week. Uh, it's just a it's a deck builder, and what what's unique about it is that you kind of make your own value for the cards, <laughs> and it's just you're just collecting and dealing paintings, 
which I believe you said they were all done by him? I believe so, yes. Yeah. So, so even, yeah, what you need, even as you're building your deck, you're also going to be then scoring cards in your deck. That, so your deck gets smaller and... <laughs> well, you know, there's different colors of card, yeah. right? And those colors will be improved in value based on who buys them and who when buys you buy them. them and sells them. And, uh -huh. and so you can kind of increase the value of your deck based on like what you buy. Like I buy a lot of purples, obviously I want purple to be more valuable. And other players will do the same. And it, it, there's going to be like different things that show you how. We played this game wrong and enjoyed it. We played it wrong again and liked it even more. And then finally we played it correctly. And it was, it was, it was even better. Like <laughs> Very, very cool. Very cool. We had to play this live with Tate. Mm -hmm. uh, spoiler alert, or to, you know, just as a disclaimer, he's a friend of ours. So... I mean, I don't know how close of a friend he is to you. I think he, I think... No, I just met him for the live stream. Oh, okay. But uh, he's a friend of mine. And, uh, yeah, so I, I really enjoy this game. It didn't hit my top list, because I have a lot of deck builders I like, but... Yeah, I just, it's I, definitely a good one. It's definitely unique. It's I very said, I like unique. that you kind of give value to the cards, whereas mm -hmm. opposed to all the cards having inherent value. There's a lot of replayability in this game as well. That's kind of a thematic connection though to art collecting and then right? you'll, yeah, the yeah and then you also will exhibit the buying. cards in your decks so you make them really valuable and then you put them in a museum so it's no longer in your deck but it scored you a bunch yeah, of points yeah yeah it has a lot of unique yeah. concepts yeah. to this game for sure promenade the game of art the limited edition version very limited very limited <laughs> yes i think it's even signed signed and numbered it is yes Ooh. okay what are we doing now we got number, we got number two. two number two Ooh. all right number two one. Uh, uh, three. All right, this is my time to shine. What? Three. Come on, daddy. One. One. No. Four. Okay. Four. You choose. Right. We'll go back this way. <laughs> All right. They're just so, waiting for me to win for the last one. Speaking of, you said this is lucky duck. Speaking of lucky duck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a wonderful world. Uh, you know how I said I liked, uh, uh, Quick games that pack a lot of punch. Yes. I also like games where you uh, can build your thing and other people can't mess with you. Uh, so this is a drafting game where you're trying to build your civilization. And the other players can't really mess with you except for taking the cards that you want. The only sad but thing still... is about this, I don't have the insert as well. We got uh, all, these game, all the games we got from PAX, we didn't have the insert. Was that for. a side effect of taking a bunch of stuff back from? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So don't and mind, like, don't mind like, the fact that there's just stuff in here. I like the futuristic themes, you know, Propaganda Center, Bermuda mm -hmm. Triangle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See if you can show off some of these cards. Yeah. Saucer Squadron. You are literally just building Bionic graphs. Your country. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it does a really good job of that. It's quick mm -hmm. and it snowballs fast yeah. for everyone. Really cool, really cool. All you need is literally one big deck of cards and then your your own little area that are both double-sided so you can play in a variety of different ways. Yep. So, yeah, There's yeah. a drafting element to it. And yeah, and they have the, the board building. for the game, too, that you'll put together. And you're trying to control five different areas of production. Yeah, and what's interesting, too, is how you control them. You'll actually go from one end of the board to the, to the other. So you'll force score, score for this one and then this one and then this one. So you can combo by... Oh, I've got this. I can build this thing, and I can. I, oh, now I've got this one, so I get these. Have, yeah. And it has this interesting, like instead of just all of them together, you just okay, you get all the things. Yeah, like sometimes you produce the the materials, and then it gives you uh, a benefit to score more oil, and the oil lets you score more science. It's a wonderful world. In fact, <laughs> it is a wonderful world. In fact, a very cool little game for sure. Anything else you want to say about it? Uh, no. Good. Did you enjoy it? Yes, I wanted to play it again, again too because I totally messed up in the and beginning. I stomped them and... miserably. Uh -huh. They just oh, it was decimation. But it's a game where you learn from your mistakes. What about the solo mode? The solo mode's pretty good and it has a bunch of scenarios you can play by yourself as well. Yeah. All right, it's gonna be weird. What's my number two? Did you look? Did you look at my no, number two? No, I did Just now. What do you What do you think my number two I'd... would be? Don't know. Give you a hint. We just played it not too long ago. Played it a lot actually lately. Last this last week. Uh. A lot. I don't know. You already did City Skyline. <laughs> I don't know. No, we played that. We didn't play that one a lot. Maybe though. there was a live yeah, stream. A lot. Maybe there was a live we stream. Played it a lot. Oh, oh, oh! You I know this one. Before. Okay, Paranormal Detective. How was she not? We play. I mean, if I play I a game more than four or five you know. times, <laughs> it's good. And Paranormal Detectives is. <laughs> 
Amazing. Uh, <laughs> another <laughs> lucky duck game. Uh, they're just oh, wow, they they're just it. pushing out <laughs> good stuff. Parallel Detectives is my it kills a lot of games for me. It kills mm -hmm. a lot of games. Like what? Mysterium. Clue. Mysterium. Uh, Dixit. No, Dixit. I mean, I mean this, Dixit has there's storytelling games, but I, and I separate those. I'll still yeah, play. I'll still yeah. probably play a Dixit okay. style game or Detective Club. Uh -huh. But this one, it just it gets rid of a lot of a lot of those games that you're you're trying to figure out who done it. The Clue style games, because yes. it brings a lot to the table. Uh, you, one of you guys plays uh -huh. as the ghost. Everybody else plays as a detective. The ghost is working with everyone to help them to make sure that they solve his or her At least murder. Least someone will win. <laughs> and everyone else is trying to work independently with the ghost in order to get all of the clues for the game. It comes with a ton of components, dry erase markers, things that I really like. Player hiding board area. Yeah. Markers here. It comes with a rope that you can use. So basically, on your turn as an investigator, you'll give the ghost a card. And then, when you give the ghost a card, they're going to uh, answer the question that goes along with the card. So who maybe, killed you? Who make killed it with me? the rope? Okay, so you'll play that card. It's gone forever. I'll then have to try and show, make a person or an in, in, instance in which I was killed by somebody or something. And everybody's just trying to figure out who, what, where, when, why, and how. And if you can manage to do that before anybody else, you win. There's What's really cool about all this stuff, though, is you've got these, this talking board here, which you can utilize as the ghost. There's a ghost meter over here. This tells you the uh, sex of the person as well as where they were hurt. And then there's tarot cards you use. There's just a ton of stuff that's interactive with this game. It plays really well. There's probably 40 or 50 different stories to the game. There's a lot, and they have an app that has basically more. more. There's more. a lot of replayability. Uh, I'm a big fan of this game. Play with. I play, we play it live. We, this this last week. Um, Played it at our holiday party at the end of the night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just a big fan of it. I like games that do this kind of new age clue style thing where you're trying to figure out who did it, who done it, that kind of thing, which I'll have an honorable mention tonight based on another game like that. Mm -hmm. um, but this one is just a highly exceptional game. Yeah, this one you actually have to figure out who, what, when, where, why, and how. Exactly. You have to get the exact keywords, which makes it extremely that's, challenging. Yeah, that's the challenge part of it. So, Paranormal Detectives, it's an excellent game. It's my number two on, in, uh, of the year, which is, you know, weird for me to pick a game that's kind of like a party game. Yeah, and for those of you who <laughs> like cooperative games, you can even play this cooperatively. Yep, you can. You can play as a co-op. Okay. okay. All right, my number two you bring out is a little tiny game, Make Cooperative. It was on Kickstarter this year. Uh, by 524 Labs, they do all the, a lot of the mint tin games, so that what's great is it's super prototype. easy. Prototype. Yeah, this is the prototype version, just disclaimer, so everything will actually totally fit into the little mint tin. A lot of game and a small package that you can take around with you anywhere. That's what I love about the mint tin games. Uh, mint delivery and mint work. We took them on trips before with other people, play them in hotel lobbies or at restaurants. And this is a cooperative game, which I love cooperative games because it's just a little bit friendlier. It's a good break between other games or to bring in people who maybe haven't played again games uh, like this before. So lots of little mint pieces in the games, of course, little are superheroes tiny, use. tiny dice, tiny little meeples as well. A lot of cards that really uh, break up the game. So a mint cooperative, you are sort of like minty superheroes trying to keep uh, the town minty fresh so there'll be different abilities that you'll have there'll be different um, bosses that you're trying to <laughs> defeat like gingivitis and uh, you'll be rolling dice and then cooperatively choosing who's going to use what dice to help clear the bad and based on the die you roll yeah. is how difficult and more challenging the round is going to be. There's yes. multiple bosses that do different things and make the game function a little differently. And then cards will come out to add the mint to, the, to board, the board, which, which you don't want. You have to try to get rid of. And yeah, just really quick, easy way to play and get people having fun. Yeah. It's a really nice little mint tin style yeah. game. Uh, enjoyable. Uh, I am. It, it, I think it falls in line with the rest of the mint ones, but uh, personally, Mintworks is still my personal favorite in in the line. 
Uh, what do you think? No, I like cooperative games. It's a good one. It fits in your pocket. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Play it pretty much anywhere. And it's really, really easily and very, very portable, which is yeah. nice. And it gets more and more challenging as, as you progress. Yeah, so you pr- as you progress through the different bosses, it gets more challenging uh, every time you play. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good little one. Pretty good little game. Okay. That's one, one we more. We roll for number one. And then we'll also include all of our little things. Okay, four. Six. Five. Good enough. <laughs> Roll off. Three. Solid number. It's a solid number. All right. Six. You can go first. I'll go second. Kelly can go third. Oh, that's go some ahead. nonsense. Okay. All right. <laughs> so situated here. Number one. My number one. Game of the year. You ready? Okay. You ready? Have you know what it is. Right? I don't remember. You don't remember either? Do you remember? I saw it five minutes ago, but I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's by Mythic Games oh, and yes. Lucky Duck Games. Okay. <laughs> and it's called Time of Legends Destinies. Already off of Kickstarter. I only have the prototype, and I only have to play... In fact, here, this looks better. This is the right side. I, I, I only have to play one of the scenarios, yeah. but it is so good. It is a lot of fun. It's an app-based game, though, so if you don't like app-based games, it might not be for you, but you are literally moving around as an RPG character, going around and investigating certain areas, talking to people, fighting against bad guys. You're trying to complete your specific destiny, and different characters have different destinies, and you're all playing against each other on the same board, utilizing the same characters, which changes the interactions. If I kill the guy that you needed to talk to, that guy's no longer there. Things like that. Very, very interesting. Yeah, the little miniatures, which are beautiful. Mythic Games does a great job with that kind of stuff. This was an excellent, excellent partnership. It plays 120, 150 minutes, but that's probably sort of true, depending on what scenario you're playing. It doesn't feel like it, though. Yeah, it doesn't. I I played this multiple, just the basic scenario. I played it with all the three different characters, uh, more than once for some of them. And uh, I did exceptionally well in some situations and exceptionally poor in other situations. Uh, it's it's a really fun little game, and I am very, very impressed with it. I think this game is going to do excellent next year when it comes out. I want to see what all the rest of the stuff is going to be. And there's already so much content in it with just the one Yeah, there's going to be more than one scenario, though. Yeah. I know. There's going to be yeah. probably many scenarios, and I'm sure they're going to add more. It's Lucky Duck, so they're going to add more, just like Chronicles of Crime. Mm-hmm. So I think this last year, I think Chronicles of Crime was my number one, I think. This, sounds about right. This feels and a lot. And now they got this deeper. one, which is even even better, an even better game. With you know, it adds my favorite thing, which is minis. <laughs> <laughs> but but with the quality of of a Lucky Duck and Mythic game put into it, with the storyline added, the RPG mm-hmm. elements, it's a game that fits everybody. It's got a puzzle to it as well, which you kind of probably like. Did you the, like? There's a the puzzle, puzzle of how do you the, get to do this specific thing the yeah, fastest and yeah, the best way. Yeah, navigating around the world. You have to do everything the best way possible. Mm-hmm. If you fail, you're going to be reduced in value or points. And mm-hmm. you also have to determine uh, the puzzle of your board. You have these stats that we be placing down. And you need to determine, do yeah. I want the lower end stat, which is going to cost me more, or the higher end stat, as long as I roll well... It's cheaper, and I can use this other currency for other things. And it has all these options and choices. You're kind of choices. adjusting your own luck in that way, which is nice. So it has a little bit of luck. It has a little bit of like a small puzzly feel as to how do I do this the best possible way. And then it has a bunch of thematic elements, the yes, app and the thematic. miniatures. <laughs> Time of Legends Destinies is, is going to do great. It's one to three players. Um, and that's probably because the scenarios, they just didn't add a fourth player. But regardless, I, I think it, it has to do with the actually playing the t- playing through the turns. I have no yeah, idea. I, I don't know. It, it plays well with all one, two, or three. It doesn't matter. It's fun. I think you guys will enjoy it. Yeah. I'll just let this over here. <laughs> all right. Destinies. Oh. All right, you now. Yeah. You now. You made me go first. <laughs> all right. So I'm obsessed with civilization development on a macro level. So that being said, can you guess what my number one would be? Tribes. So did you guess tribes? Dawn of Humanities? <laughs> I definitely Cosmo. didn't see it. So this game, you just develop technology for your tribe of early humans, and it ends when you hit, like, the, I don't know, the last the era of the board. <laughs> the last era of the board. <laughs> uh, re- recorded history. Oh, yeah, 
yeah. Mm -hmm. all, is it, this is it's all, it's easy to set up this game too, which is nice. And then uh, you have I don't know what you call it when you have the the action pool and then you take an action and put it at the back. Rondell kind of no, yeah. it's not really a rondel. Yeah, yeah. Kinda. You'll put them like this though. Yeah. And then you'll get to choose them, and based on how you choose them, it'll cost more. So the first one would be free, and the second one would cost one yeah. and two. Okay. And then as you take them, yeah. they'll go to the back of the board. That's kind of interesting. Thing. That's usually in a buying mechanism, and not always in an a, action taking an mechanism. Action yeah, and the, the, the interesting yeah. part about it is that those tokens are only used for to putting in on the action. So you'll have like we'll say six of them, and then you you know you can burn them all to go here. And and if the people keep taking the first one, you won't get yours <laughs> back. Per, per se. Yep. Well, additionally, actions and events will pop up on the action board too. And when these hit this specific area, mm. these will trigger. Yeah, so these will get, actually occur as well. Up. Well, actually, you Could trigger you them by bad? taking the action. Well, you'll, sometimes you'll just have to. Is that? I mean, when you don't have any tokens, oh, yeah, you, you have all your to. action tokens will be on the board, and so you'll be forced to take. A low cost one which you know could, could be the event right at the front yeah um additionally you get there's a little bit of tableau management a little bit of tile placement uh, as far as where you want to place your tribes and how you want to place them because you'll be going to these specific locations there's a bunch of little tribe members there's the <laughs> bonus points for teeth and then there's these guys here that you'll place on the board that will give you bonuses as you complete them yeah you, you'll get more bonuses from the first first person to do it right yeah so that's the basic idea of the game. Yeah. It's it's really cool. You didn't get to play it, right? This is I think this um, is by Cosmos as well, I, right? I played yeah, it once, Cosmos. but it was a long. It was when we were first learning it, I think. I think you just I think you just I heard about like, it. Part of it. No, I played part of it. I don't know. I don't know if you played it. If you played it, it wasn't with I me. I just didn't play a whole game. Oh, okay. Yeah. But this is a really cool little game. It was a nice civ builder that adds some other different qualities to it as well. Pretty. Mm-hmm. Very pretty. And fits everything in here really <laughs> easily. It's a really quick game to to put put, put back. So well, this one was number one, huh? Yeah. You like the tile building style games, huh? I, I like the the civilization building mm -hmm. games. Is it better than Tapestry then? Uh, I didn't play Tapestry. Oh, okay. Oh, that's why it's not on your list. Maybe. Well, maybe I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It, that definitely feels more like a civ building in my opinion than Tapestry. Mm -hmm. My number one, which we've already heard about, <laughs> is City Skyline, oh, wow. okay. board game. So this is my number one because I wanted to play it right again, right away again. I love puzzle games, I uh, love that aspect, but it still felt like uh, not a puzzle game that you would get mad at me <laughs> when we're playing <laughs> because we're playing cooperatively. Because she can't cheat in this one, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> not cheating, <laughs> just playing better. Uh, yeah, that's one way of putting it. Yes. Step up. And uh, I liked it Playing so much, better. you actually got me the app as well for Christmas. So yep. <laughs> we had a lot of fun playing this game. And just a couple things I wanted to add. We talked about it already a lot. Uh, just there's a lot of content that you can, a lot of replayability. It just feels like you want to play again because you want to build a better city than you did before, which is really uh, that that feeling of wanting to learn improve. from your mistakes and improve and do better. I really like that in games, and I think this does a great job of that. Do you think it does better at one player, two, three, or do you think it doesn't matter? Um, you said you said a little bit how it's, it's it's different with the variable player powers. Yeah, I think I think it does have things that are added with the multiplayer aspect, and I mean, for a lot of people, that's why they want to play board games. They want to spend time with their families and face to face time right and so i think this does a good job of that I, I think you could for solo i'm liking the app better i think um just because there's a little oh, bit it's more a huge more you can Sim do City there's so much yes. it's, it's, this yes. is like the new version of because sim city's out maxim maxis got bought out or whatever and so they the spiritual what, successor yeah yeah basically spiritual yeah. successor yeah, spiritual. and in all in all honesty better than the last sim city that came out city skyline so if you like the old stuff like that this is a way better version of building that. stuff puzzling together your city and just feeling like you accomplished something and you're going to do better next time that's great it's a great game it really is all right let's talk about our honorable mentions and we'll just go through the same the same order as previous so me grant and then you can talk about yours okay. uh, i'm just going to go through six through ten really quick Five Minute Mystery, which was already talked about, so I'm not going to go and talk about that anymore. Uh, Cristallo, uh, I'll let you talk about that, I suppose. Okay, I Excellent game, though. <laughs> uh, Glenmore 2 Chronicles, 
Uh, that one is a nice rondelle game with a ton of components, a ton of pieces, all that good stuff. Paradise Lost is another clue style game, but it plays completely different to games like Paranormal Detectives in which you're literally playing a, st a stylized version of Clue, a beautiful stylized version of Clue, uh, with a lot more choice and there's also a rondelle in that as well. And then Iseon, Iseon uh, by the guys that made Mysthea. I can't remember the name of the company. Oh, oh no. Do you remember? Uh, Tabula Games. Tabula Games, that's it. Iseon is a beautiful, gorgeous, cool, crazy looking game. It functions really well as well. Three honorable mentions. Shards of Infinity, the expansion. I played both though this year, but the expansion Salvation is an excellent cooperative deck builder that's really, really quick. Probably not my favorite, but definitely one I would pull out over most other ones if I want to play a quick deck builder game that works cooperatively. Defense Grid is an older style game, but I reviewed it this year. It is the it was probably my favorite current tower defense game in the sense that it actually plays like one of the apps. You feel like you're playing Defense Grid, the board game. This is one of the best tower defense board games we've played. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but Defense Grid, I bought the app afterwards, and then my friends bought the app afterwards, or the game on Switch and all that, and they've, they've loved that, so. So like the Jetpack Joyride, the, the game evokes the game. Yes, yes. And then the last one is uh, uh, I Am the Fourth Wall. It is a Cthulhu-style game, and I want to pay tribute to them because they did an excellent, excellent, excellent job of making the game look amazing. The game I did definitely enjoy, it's just not in my top 10, yeah. but I wanted to say I'm so exceptionally proud to see the love and care and affection put in to make that game look excellent, and they did a good job of that, so well done, guys. All right, so I have Time of Legends Destinies, a honorable mention. And it was just because we only had the one scenario as the prototype, and I didn't feel the one scenario was enough to make the top five. But obviously, you thought it was good enough, it made your top one, was it? Uh, I saw, uh, it's because I, I, I know what's coming. Yeah, yeah. I know. The, the hype, I saw Chronicles of I played Chronicles of Crime. I know what they're going to do. The hype for it just puts it at the, the honorable mention for the one scenario. Yep. Uh, Dungeon Drop, it was a game where you basically have a bunch of cubes, drop them on the thing, it does a really good job with taking a bunch of cubes and making a dungeon crawl. Like, you wouldn't think it's possible, but it is. And then my last one is Star Colonies. It's a unique deck builder. It, does a lot, it has a lot of cool themes. Uh, for example, it's a deck builder where you never shuffle your deck, so you get like a certain pattern of your deck going through, and you're exploring and building. I actually didn't play that one until after you guys reviewed it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know much about it other than it's a bizarre deck builder that you don't actually shuffle your I don't deck. I know it's a deck builder, but it's more like a production line as yeah, opposed to... Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, that was, that's it for my honorable mentions. Beautiful. All I right. brought mine out. <laughs> that's why I figured. Yeah. Uh, Is that so, the only one you got? No, no. Oh, you got more. more. Okay. I have three uh, honorable mentions. Cristalo, puzzle game. Can we look at it really quick? Or yeah. No? yeah, it's by Liberty Kuiper, I believe. Yeah. So. And I've got crystals and really cool cards where you're basically laying, well, I won't bring it all out, but uh, laying the cards on top of each other to try to uh, gain the crystals on there in certain pattern and free all the creatures so you can defeat the dragon. It, and it is does a very what the game Rune game. tries to do. And Rune is actually a very popular game where you're placing cards on cards to make patterns in order to gain certain things and it's a solo game. Uh, this game is also a solo game as yeah, well. Yeah, and I put it as honorable mention because technically it came out last year, but I didn't get to play it till this year, so. It probably would have, well, it, well, it was on my sure. it was on my list until I realized it actually came out last year. <laughs> um, but it's really good. It's really good. I don't like solo games all that much. I have been getting more into them lately, and mm -hmm. because of that, I made this game into a co-op game in which we play it, play where it people will, uh, I'll draw a card and play it, then he'll draw and she'll draw. So you can play it cooperatively. Um, it's like the reverse of that rule where you said, "Why is this game cooperative? You're just playing by yourself." Yeah, yeah. 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 But this one here, it's cool because we just, you, I'm like, okay, you can play how you want, I'll play how I want, we'll just see how, how well we can do together. But <laughs> but it, I played this solo multiple, multiple times. And we stink at it. We stink <laughs> yeah, at it. Yeah, it's, it's so very difficult. Challenging. It's another one of the games, though, where you're actually learning how to build your own like strategies and ways of, of building the cards on top of one another and underneath one another yep. as you progress. So you feel like you're, you're learning and progressing and learning from your mistakes, which I really like that feeling. Excellent um, little game. 
Another one I put for an honorable mention was the expansion for Everdell because the art is so beautiful. Solid game, but the art really just feels, makes the theme come out more and makes it really enjoyable and all the pieces of production quality value is really hard. So the expansion is Pearlbrook and we have the collector's edition here. And so we have the, we stuff. have two more expansions that came out this year, yes. that, that, that were on Kickstarter this year. We have those coming as well to try out. And I'm sure it's going to be amazing as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess I'm not sure technically if Pearlbrook came out this year or last year. So that's why it's on. Um, well, it was, it was, we, I think it came out this year. I think as far as production goes. And the last sure. game I wanted to give a shout out to was Planet, which technically came games. out last year as well, but we only got to play this this year, and it's another kind of puzzle game. <laughs> it's an entire list. Did you pick any games that weren't puzzle games? Mint, Mint Cooperative? I guess. <laughs> Barely. She likes this one just because she builds the your planet. planet, which is so cool. Yep. Put the pieces in like this, and and it's competitive, but it's not like super mean competitive. You're kind of just building your own planet and trying to get the most of certain combinations. And there's a lot of replayability. These are magnetized, by the way. Yes. So they magnetize and fit on here, and you get to just build your little continents. Yeah, so I like this. I want to see a, a more sci-fi version of this. Like, are you building alien planets? Yeah. yeah. And then there's the different objectives that you're trying to get, and they all have some cool animal art from around the world, which is really fun and interesting. So it has a STEM element, STEM education element it's to it good. as well. It's good. I also suck at this game, but I really enjoy it. Um, we played it multiple times with multiple people. It's really easy to teach, really yes. easy to play, okay. quick, fast. Very visual. So, not no language you to, you're, on it. You're language sitting there doing this half the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, oh, oh, I don't have that. Or, yeah, or, no, or, or, or you're asking, hey, how many how many desert you have? And you're like, oh, four. I'm like, hmm, okay, I, I can, can make get, six can here. Five, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to guarantee this thing, and she gets nothing, which is great. <laughs> oh, no. The tiles fell and she got something that gave her a bunch more. And now I'm, you know, so it's you're, you're, there's a, a mix of luck with puzzly strategy mm -hmm. and then you're but also you doing could, area control. Instead of that, you could cho be choosing to look two more steps ahead. No, nah, to it's see too much for this brain. <laughs> <laughs> too much for this brain. But yeah, Planets is a good one. Yeah, those Planets. are my honorable mentions. Great. So those were our top five games of the year 2019. Awesome. Uh, Plus, plus some more. I gave like eight out extra and three and three other ones. So if you like any of these games or are interested in taking a look at them, we'll have them down below in the link in the description that you can go ahead and take a peek at. I uh, Oh, and give us a like on the video. I guess. Maybe share. Yeah, here. Subscribe. Subscribe. Push the bell button there. <laughs> Got it? Okay, good. And uh, we appreciate it. We'll do more top five lists pretty soon here. Let me know what you guys think of the, the studio. We had to do a couple cuts to phones and other things, but I, I think it worked out pretty well. I think we got to all talk about all our games. Thank you guys for joining me in our top five list. As always, I look forward to seeing See you guys next time.